Hey everyone, it's Blake Curtis again. Today we're going to talk about how using years of experience on job descriptions is one of the most fallacious practices used today and how it harms more women, minorities, and older professionals than any other target group. We're also going to talk about how we can mitigate this issue and start closing the workforce gap. So let's go ahead and hop in really quick and jump right to it. So first things first, do you actually know what a year of experience is? If someone asks you today, what is the difference between a year of experience versus a year of exposure, would you have a good answer? Or would you simply ramble on and use personal experience and anecdotal evidence? So let's break down a year of experience and show you how we can't scale it in our industry. So first, did you know that a year of experience presumes that an individual works 24 hours a day and seven days a week? So that means that a year of experience is actually equal to 8,760 hours. Go out there and Google it. It's pretty simple to do. Now, the average person actually works five days a week, eight hours a day, and 52 weeks out of the year. And that's assuming no paid time off, no holidays. You don't get sick. So at most, you can only get 2,080 hours. Now let's look at this graphically here, right? So you have 8,760 hours, but by default, you're automatically given 6,680 hours. You're just given that. You don't have to work for that at all. Now, you actually work 2,080 hours out of the year. 2,080 hours is not even equivalent to a quarter of the year. Think about that. Now, based on this math, if you're really going to mandate years of experience on your job description, it would take you four to six years to obtain one quantifiable year of experience. But yet we're mandating this. Now, surprisingly, this is the thing that you guys are really going to find is pretty interesting. Did you know the average professional only spends two to four hours completing the activities on their job description? Now, why? Because a lot of that is planning, emails, meetings, instant messages, and just distractions in general. But what we found in our international study is that increased years of experience does not significantly influence performance. So if HR doesn't see it and the businesses don't see it, why are they not relying on science and statistics to support using an arbitrary number of years of experience on a job description? And the reason why it doesn't work is because it doesn't consider how many hours a professional works in a day or the quality of their work. I could spend four hours configuring the same firewall as one of my colleagues and our task quality is going to be completely different. He may be more experienced, he may be paying more attention, he may be able to configure more than I can. This is what years of experience can't do because it's way too broad. 